the rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Susie, roll call, please. Councilmember Chambers? Here. Councilmember Salcedo? Here. Councilmember Yankovic? Here. Councilmember Canfield is absent, and Mayor DeVore? I am here. Uh, motion to approve the absence of Mr. Canfield. I'll support. Motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, approval of the consent agenda for tonight? I make that motion. Support. Discussion or changes? Susie? Mayor Gore? Yes. Councilmember Salzfield? Yes. Councilmember Yankovich? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. And Councilmember Canfield is absent. Uh, citizen discussion for items not on the agenda. Oh, he doesn't just sit right there. Uh, That's the same side of the podium. You got a pit bit on? You got to get your steps in? No, no. Uh, Perry Beecham, I reside at 924 Riverside Drive, Lowell, Michigan. Uh, I just want to, from the last council meeting, uh, Mike, you updated us on uh, the, the income tax, the roads, and that type of thing. Uh, and here's where I'm going to throw Mr. Canfield under the bus. Um, he had mentioned, you know, by the vote that the citizens weren't interested in raising taxes and everything. And I'm not, all the options that were given, uh, there wasn't very many, there wasn't anything that I was excited about. Uh, I think the city um, could, again, maybe do a better job of informing the, the citizens of the income tax, how it would play out. And I state that because uh, an elder, uh, retired couple I was talking to, um, they didn't quite understand you know, that uh, their biggest concern was that the money wouldn't be used for the roads. Um, and I think the council has made that commitment. And I think you're, each week, each month, you're building more trust with the citizens. And so, uh, I, I believe the things that you um, say, and, and I believe that that income tax would be used strictly for that. And I, I said to them, I said, so if it's all about reducing or paying less, what does it matter? Because they would actually have, they own property, they would have a reduction, and they would, uh, not, their retirement would be, uh, wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't have an income tax on it. So I think the city can do a better job. And what I was talking about when Mr. Canfield said that, you know, the citizens have spoken, they don't want to see any higher taxes. I think if the citizens have a full understanding, um, and I say this because if you look at what the community, again, the city and the townships, recently did with the um, $52 million bond issue with the schools, that passed overwhelmingly, and I know that it was not going to increase, it was going to be a continuation of what we're currently paying, so it wouldn't be an increase in our taxes, but it certainly would have been a great reduction for the next 30 years if it would have been turned down. So I, I think the citizens um, could, uh, if they're more informed, uh, could do that because I think the other options, you know, the police force, you know, reducing services and everything, I, I don't, I don't view that as as an option. So, again, I, I would like to see the city do a better job. I think part of it too, because when we we're talking at one of the meetings, I think it was going to 1.3 million going to bring in, and uh, each year in, in the um, income tax, um, but uh, there was going to be three quarters of a million, 775,000, I don't have the exact figures, but that was going to be used for roads, and, you, and I was sitting there thinking, you mean we're going to have almost $500,000 in, because it said administration, and uh, what was failed 
to communicate, I think, was that a large sum of that was the reduction of um, property tax, and that money that would be coming out of that majority would be replacing the, the property tax. So I think there was just a lot of confusion, uh, and I think that we should possibly, you know, get our ducks in a row and look at um, going for the income tax, because the other ones, in my opinion, just, um, it's not something, that's not the direction that I want to see the city go. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Anybody else? Jake Gavin, 527 Lafayette C Street. Um, so I pretty much agree with anything that Perry said, but I would also add to what he said. Um, when the city presents information, maybe present it in smaller bit-sized pieces rather than presenting it all at once. Because uh, if anyone else attended the informational meetings, it was a two and a half hour long meeting and just explained everything all at once. And I just think it was informational role for a lot of people. I mean, yeah, even for me, like, you know, I was a former candidate for city council and it was just a lot of, a lot of information we had taken. So I would also, I would suggest bite-sizing information. And then also um, the informational meetings, start using Facebook Live so that people who can't be here in person to the informational <coughs> meetings can stay at home or watch it later on at their own personal time without having to be here in person. Uh, another idea I had potentially is um, the sewer and water fixes that need to be done, potentially using the income tax money go towards that as well. So people are not paying an income tax increase along with sewer and water fee increases, so again, a double, double increase. And then maybe sidewalk repairs even for, no, for over the, the life of the income tax say, hey, the city will pay for sidewalk repairs, not only sidewalk repairs, not snow removal or anything like that, but just some ideas to maybe make it a little bit more pal palatable for people. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Hello, my name is Eric Barkus. I'm moving into 215 West Main here very shortly. Uh, I was very impressed with your public works director, Dan. Uh, my wife and I smelled, smelled a gas leak a month ago near Ball's Ice Cream, and uh, soon I was hung up uh, on the phone with Dan, and he was there uh, within a few minutes. So he and he took care of that situation very well. So good job, and thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. Uh, old business Suez renewal. Good evening, Mayor City Council. Our current agreement with Suez to manage our wastewater treatment facility is scheduled to expire on June 30, 2020. Suez has reached out to the city to inquire if we would be interested in extending the current agreement for an additional five years. The current agreement with Suez set the baseline monthly payment for services at $35,925 per month in 2015 and annually during the contract would be adjusted by a cost of living index, index to account for inflation. During the five years of the contract, we saw inflationary increases of 1.01% in 2016. In 2017, 1.63%. Um, our significant one last year, 2.87%. And then this past July, 1.65%. The current amount in 2019 for Suez's services is $38,490 per month. If we renewed the agreement in fiscal year, this is a correction in your memo, fiscal year 2021, the price will remain as it is currently. The first cost of a living adjustment wouldn't take place until fiscal year 2022, which would be July 1, 2021. The increase for the next five years of this agreement would be just be the cost of living adjustment, whatever the CPI indicates. The city has not bid this service since the plant was privatized in the, in the mid 1980s. We've had consistency in personnel at the plant. I believe our staff from Suez does an excellent job for the city. If you were to bid this out, it would, only, it would only be to see if there was a cost savings. The issue with bidding is Suez and other bidders could submit, submit bids higher than it is currently. Additionally, we may receive a significantly lower bid, but we would have new personnel who may not be as equipped to manage the facility. I'm not sure the cost will be significantly lower and with it might lower the quality of services if we, if we change providers. 
In my opinion, I would prefer to renew the agreement, but this decision is ultimately the decision of the city council. In my mind, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If we bid this out, I would like to require to, ret to retain the current staff to the facility as I would not want the two assigned to our facility to lose employment over our change. That said, if we go with a lower bid provider, we have no idea what employment conditions those two are walking into. If renewing the agreement is satisfactory to the, con the city council, I will make some revisions based on the legal opinion of our city attorney um, to the attached amendment of our agreement along with Sue Ebbs. Once those are finalized, I can come back to city council for approval. If you would like us to bid this service, the Public Works Director and I will begin the process of preparing the specifications. However, City Administration really needs direction on how you'd like us to proceed going forward. I don't want to change it. If you're going to do a plant expansion, that's even more reason not to bring in mm -hmm. a bunch of new people. I don't know. They've done a great job for us historically. Mm -hmm. When we have a facility that the state people send other folks to see how to do it right, we got enough stuff on our plates. Why waste I agree. time looking for somebody to? Well, the reason we're bringing this up is, is a few years ago we talked about looking at all current con contracts with the city regardless of what they were, who they were, and I, I realize that's what we're doing here today. Um, in reading this, Mike, I, I thought there was some, some language that I wasn't 100% sure it was appropriate when you said we don't know who we're going to get. Again, Cody and Ryan do a fantastic job, but that doesn't mean to say that if we were to select to go somewhere else that they may not be just as well employees as anything else. So I thought there was some, some tone in here that, that was kind of a uh, strong tone in that part of it. So that, that was my take on that part of it uh, going forward. But, but I am in favor of keeping Suez as the overall. They, they've done a fantastic job and it's roughly $462,000 a year. And I don't think we're gonna get that anywhere else. Not with that quality. And we have no, we don't <coughs> never get any issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes, we never have to, we don't have any problems coming for us, so. So, if you would like, I, what I will do is there's, like I said, City Attorney and I looked at the amendments. There's a couple of things we'd like to talk to them about, make a couple of changes. And once the document is, is finalized, what, what I'm understanding is going to bring back. We have consensus on Mike moving forward with Suez. Yep. Yes. Yep. You got it. New business, uh, number A. Well, number four, overhaul and clean. He's the mayor and council. Well, number four at the water plant is in need of a clean. It's been in place since February of 1990 and has only received minimal routine maintenance to the, to the well and the pump. Well, they haven't seen a capacity change over the years, which is a good sign that the well is located in a, in a very good location within the aquifer. The time's come to pull it out and inspect it and maintain it so we can continue to provide the uh, quality water that our community expects. Uh, the project would consist of pulling the pump and inspecting the whole unit, with replacement of bearings and couplings and shafts, uh, motor discs assembled and cleaned, bearings replaced, and then the unit tested. Uh, the well will be video inspected and cleaned. Uh, that hasn't been cleaned since 1990. Uh, the cleaning type will depend on what the video uh, inspection brings back. Once all three components of the work are done, it'll be reinstalled, tested, the wall will be chlorinated. Once everything passed, it'll be put back into service. Uh, we have funds budgeted in the current fiscal year to have this work performed. However, the, the work that's being uh, brought forward today does not include any repair or replacement of the pebbling holes and columns. That would be a good determination once it gets torn apart. Um, and then any additional work would be further approvals. Uh, this wall cleaning and pump overhaul will be the last one on all the four wells. In 2008, wall two was was taken care of, and wall three was performed in 2011, and in 2016, wall number one uh, received this work. We received two quotes for the work. Uh, 
Peerless Midwest, uh, $19,894.92 uh, is the one that we're recommending because uh, their quote includes the cleaning of the of the well or the other one did not. Yes. My information, how do you clean a well? It all depends what they what they find down there. They could use chemicals, they could use ultrasonic sounds. Um, there, there's uh, physical cleaning like you would with anything else. It all depends on what they see and what they find down there. Could end up being a pull it out and too, which I highly doubt because it's so they run a camera down yes. there? And yep, just run a camera down, kind of like when you look at a sewer line, only it's water. Okay. And the light, they look at it, see how it all looks, and then one thing you want to make sure is the uh, the uh, mesh work around the point, if you will, is in good, good condition and not falling apart and not crudded up with something. But there's, they've got their ways of doing it. You can use air, you can blow some air down through there or press more water. They, uh, Peerless Midwest does this uh, for a living all over the country. Are they the ones who did the previous clean? Yes, they are. And a little, I don't know, a thousand and sixteen dollars, you get a full cleaning too, along with everything else. It's a six thousand dollar charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yep. What's the difference? Is there different types of clean? This one says clean well conventionally, so I don't. We wanted the three I mentioned. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Dan? Download if it needs a new well point or casing or. Whatever, or just be teeing them with. Yeah, we'll take a look at it, see what their what their costs might be, and we'll probably come back and try to talk. Okay. Just so you know, we have forty thousand dollars budgeted for this work. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, uh, look for that motion then to approve the peerless Midwest quote. So move. Support. Any other questions for Dan? Sue. So, Mayor Board. Yes. Councilmember Salcedo. Yes. Councilmember Yankovic. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Canfield is absent. All right. Uh, number C, donation of the police cruiser to mm -hmm. KCTC. Chief, you skip the handbook. Oh, the employee handbook. All right. Number B is the employee handbook, Mike. When I arrived in 2016, one of the first things I did was review our current employee handbook. At the time, it was apparent to me the handbook was not sufficient for a municipal operation and needed to be upgraded significantly. This is one of those tasks I've been working on for a very long time. However, due to other items always surfacing, which I must focus my attention towards, the revising of the handbook has been something that has taken much longer than I expected. I worked with Anna Lindhurst from Low Light Power as she helped me update our handbook and mirror it to Low Light Power's policies and procedures as much as, as, much as it could. I also had labor attorney from Fahey Schultz Burnett Rose review this to make sure it was le legally applicable. Our previous policy was 12 pages and very open inter interpretation in my opinion. Our revised handbook is now 40 period pages, very thorough and meets federal and state legal requirements. Policies can be revised or added depending on the need. The upgraded policy includes guidelines for anti-harassment, workplace violence, social media, and many other items of necessity not in the current handbook. Um, I must clarify that in situations where there's conflicting language between an employee, employee's employment agreement in the handbook, we will refer to language in the employee's labor agreement to resolve the conflict. For example, the standby pay language in the handbook differs from one of our labor contracts. Um, and so in those instances, when we have those issues, we would refer to the contract, not the handbook in, in, in those cases. So, but this is something that the city council needs to approve before it can be implemented. And I'm recommending the whole city council approve the revised handbook as presented. I have a question. Sure. Maybe I'm just, I actually tried to read all of it this <laughs> afternoon. Um, section 5 1, mm -hmm. am I not understanding? Group health care insurance covering certain hospitalization, surgical, and medical expenses is offered on a voluntary basis with 100% of the premium paid by the employee. Should that be employer? Yes, yeah, typo. Cool. It's also in group dental insurance. Okay, I will fix that. You did say you tried. I didn't say you completed. <laughs> Alright, any other questions for Mike? Okay, motion to approve the changes to the employee handbook. I make that motion. I support. Any other discussion? Sue? 
Council Member Sosvedo? Yes. Council Member Yankovic? Yes. Council Member Chambers? Yes. Council Member Canfield is absent and Mayor DeVore? Yes. All right, now we're going to talk about the police crews of the KCTC Chief. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. The Kent Career Tech Center Junior Police Academy put out a request for departments that were wanting to donate old police cruisers as they will take these vehicles. Um, this vehicle that we have is a 2010 Chevrolet Impala, which was purchased in 2009, so it was a 2010 model. Uh, it has 155,000 miles on the body. Uh, to say that it's in fair condition would be uh, generous. Um, <laughs> By the time we get rid of our vehicles, they're pretty much worn out. This would serve two purposes. One, it would go to the Kent Career Tech Center Auto um, Mechanics Division, and they would go through the vehicle with their high school students. As you know, Lowell High School participates in the Kent Career Tech Center in both the Auto Mechanics as well as the uh, Junior Police Academy. Um, the last vehicle that we did auction off, uh, we, I think we got around $1,500, and then the auction company took between 10 and 20 percent. Um, this is the this is based on what uh, the previous track record was for this type of vehicle. Now I tried to get some value for the vehicle through a Kelly Blue Book, but you can't find a 2010 Chevrolet Impala 9C1 police vehicle package on there, so I had to get the next closest one. So I gave you a range of the value of that vehicle between $1,400 and $3,700. Medium range would be about 2,600, and that's for the next closest model. So you would have to take off that last section of options where I drew the line through it, and that's everything else that you would have. So I'm probably pretty close with that $1,500 estimate about what the car is worth. So what I was requesting is that the city council make the donation of this vehicle to the Kent Career Tech Center so that uh, they can use it for two purposes. It's fifteen hundred bucks too before you pay the option company. Correct. Three hundred bucks or so. Any other questions for the chief? All right. Um, promotion to donate the two thousand ten ballot of KCTC. I'll make that motion. And I'll support. Discussion. Sue. Councilmember Yankovich. Yes. Councilmember Chambers. Yes. Councilmember Canfield is absent. Mayor Moore? Yes. Council Member Salvino? Yes. Perfect. Uh, Board and Commission reports, Marty? Uh, I have no more. I'll start. But, um, historical district, there's some cool stuff happening right across the street. I don't know how much we're supposed to talk about it because he's waiting for the stuff from the state, but it could be very nice. I think it will be. I think it'll be super cool. Yeah. Jim. I have the LCTV this Thursday here at City Hall. We'll figure out how much money we got to give away this year. Uh, DBA on Thursday for me at noon, and Fire Authority for this month has already been canceled. Uh, I think that's it. City Manager report? Yes. A um, couple of items. Uh, we're close to finalizing all of our documentation for the uh, SAW grant project. It's supposed to be completed by the end of the year, so we are in the process of, of finalizing that. One of the things we are looking at is um, the uh, completing of the asset management plan, and uh, maybe some of the projects, if, if you recall, probably back this time last year, we presented you with a 10-year I, you know, plan of how we would tackle all of our issues. Um, and we're looking at, because we found some things through the SAW grant through some of our more more uh, recent testing, um, we're looking at maybe modifying some projects in the plan. For example, the issue at Foreman Beach was never, was not something we really found out about until this summer. And uh, so one of the things we're looking at right now, Dan and I are looking at trying to uh, Incorporate that repair next summer, and we're working on we're working on that as well. Uh, also, um, also um, the water and sewer work that's needed on both Washington and Monroe. Um, we are 
trying to look at seeing if there's a way, and it probably will have to be done through a bond, um, that we can do all of those repairs, preferably doing um, Washington Street in the summer of 21, and then Monroe in 2022 when we get the federal, when we get the urban, the small urban project grant funding for Monroe, and we're trying to time those projects also. Um, something also you should know, um, obviously we're in the process right now of, of, of engineering for um, Suffolk, Power, and uh, Elizabeth Street. Uh, the community, the county just released their applications for the community development block grant, and Amity Street is in one of the low income census tracts, meaning it would be eligible for funding if we were able to, if, we, if, if that grant would be an eligible project. We're looking at submitting that grant, a grant, if you recall last year we submitted to MDOT for, to, to fix Amity through, through an MDOT grant that we didn't receive. We're looking to see whether or not we can apply to uh, CDBG to get in the same fashion where we would pay $250,000 and we get 250000 from the grant. We're looking at seeing if um, we're looking at putting that application in place as well. So we are trying to work with what we have and, and, and trying to do something to address the system. Um, Reminder, uh, Lou Bender will be here on January 23rd from 5.30 to 9.30. Um, I haven't secured the location yet. Once I get that, I will let you know. Um, we have, this past week, right before the holiday, we did meet with, um, if you saw on the uh, news, there was a, there was a, uh, um, a marijuana entity looking to set up a shop at the uh, Old Family Video. Um, Myself, Sue Ellery, and uh, Andy Moore did meet with them this past week. Um, they have not submitted their formal application as of yet. Um, I anticipate them submit, submitting their regulatory application and their special land use application very soon. Um, we'd like them to submit both at the same time so we can start our process in one, in, in basically in one fell swoop. And um, from there, we we'll go to the Planning Commission shortly thereafter, and hopefully we can get approvals possibly in February or March. Um, so we're working on that as well. Um, tomorrow Hudson Street will be closed at the bridge. They're going to be doing some work It'll be between 9 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Um, there's a lot of logs and debris that have gone up against the bridge and before we have the hard freezes fell with um, the King County Road Commission is going to come and clean that out for us. So have to use Jackson to get around uh, during those hours. Um, also, uh, Christmas in Lowell is on Saturday and the parade. And I don't really know what we're doing just yet. I, I think we're doing, I know I talked to you about it, but I didn't know what the council wanted to do for the parade. I've committed to hand up parade bags for Liz. Okay. And we're going to do it before the start. We're going to pick them up before the parade right. starts and hand them up okay. down the route and then I think Mario will have the truck out. Yeah, we'll have my truck and I'll pull the river dope, mm -hmm. the big duck again. Hopefully the wheels stay on. <laughs> <laughs> it really the does. Extra yeah, it yeah. waddles really bad when the wheels It's a duck. It's Christmas. Mm -hmm. Nothing could possibly So we can, keep our, we can keep the bags in the back of the truck and hand them on as we go. Okay. No, so our, where are we meeting and when? I don't know where yes. our... <laughs> okay. I'll Thanks. have answers for you in the next day or two. I got to talk, right. talk to Liz. Right. Yeah. So. <coughs> and, oh, no, man, that's for later. Good? Yep. It's all right. Appointments, no activity. Perry Parks and Rec is the 17th, right? Yeah. Okay. We have, I think Paul is your only member that's up, so I'll swing by there and talk to her. And that's it. Oh, you can make a consensus to continue my term on the historical district. If you would like, take me off the list. I've served two pretty fantastic meetings so far. Well, let's ask the expert, Cliff, how do you do? I wasn't there. I was <laughs> you were sitting right next to me the whole entire time, both times. Okay. Well, you guys think about it. We can come back to it if you really want to. Let's do a consensus. Yeah. I'll make a motion that 
you let him stay on it as a private as a citizen. Okay. Yes. Okay, fantastic. No opposition, but no. Okay, good. Uh, council comments, but got nothing. Jim, yeah. I'm good too. All right. All right, fantastic. Right. All right. All right. Jim. Uh, make a motion to adjourn at seven thirty. Or motion in the second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourn.